peace and grace in abundance to you all, my brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome back to the newly formed internet ministry called God's Ministry. And at this ministry, I love to do three things. Number one, I love to preach the truth of God. Number two, I love to help my Christian brothers and sisters build their faith in God. Number three, I love to try and convince non-Christians to repent, get baptized, and become a Christian. And at this ministry, I live my life by the Bible. I try my best to live my life by the Holy Bible. And one of those scriptures is Romans chapter 10, verse 17, which clearly says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is why I told you the second thing that I love to do is to help my sisters and brothers who are in Christ build their faith. The Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. What happens when a Christian is full of faith and God is pleased? Simple. Your prayers get answered. You have to worry about nothing. The Bible also said that we Christians, we live by faith and not by sight. Meaning, we go through our lives not saying, oh, is God going to help? Is God going to help me do this? Is God going to help me do that? How am I going to get these bills paid next month? Having faith in God is knowing. God wants you to live knowing that he's going to take care of you. Even if you see no way that he could do it. Having faith is knowing, knowing, not thinking, knowing and believing that God will take care of you. That's having faith. And like I said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God wants, God wants you to trust him so much that even when it looks dark, you know that God has a light at the end of the tunnel. That's what God wants you to do. Be full of faith in him. Just know, like the Bible said, God said, be still and know that I'm the Lord. I will take care of you. You have refuge in me. Come to me. That's having faith. So this is what I love to do at this ministry. Now, the message I would like to put in your ear, I would like to put in your mind. It has one word. It's titled hell. Simple as that. You have a heaven, you have a hell. But heaven is another message further on down the line. Right now, I want to speak to you about hell. And there's a few things I would like to say before I get into this message of hell. Number one, all evil people, if you die in your sins, if you die being evil, whoever you are, you're going to hell. If you take the mark of the beast in the coming future, you're going to hell. Now, for evil people, you can escape that if you repent of your sins, ask God for forgiveness of the sins you've done. Repent and get baptized. Be an obedient Christian. That will make you escape hell. But if you do not do that and you die being wicked, if you die being a wicked and evil person, you're going to wake up in hell. And like I said, if you take the mark of the beast in the coming future, you're going to hell. The third thing I don't understand now, this is, this is something I really don't understand. Well, I can't say I don't understand it. I understand it now, but before I couldn't understand it. And that is Jehovah Witnesses. These are Christians and they don't believe that there is a hell. Jesus spoke about hell. So how can you not believe that there's no hell? But like Paul said, just like Satan deceived the mind of Eve for her to disobey God, Satan deceived the minds of Christians that we cannot really see the truth of God. So when I see that Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe in hell, I know for a fact Satan has deceived their minds. Next thing about hell. If your name is not written in the book of life, you're busting hell wide open. That's Revelation chapter 20. If you could turn to that, I just want to read that verse. Revelation chapter 20. Remember, write these verses down. I don't want people to say, oh, I heard Pastor O'Neill say this. No, I don't want you to say that. I want you to say, Pastor O'Neill said in the book, Revelation chapter, or whatever scripture I give you, I want you to say, Pastor O'Neill said, in the Bible, in such and such book, this is what it said. You turn to that, 
and you read that. Don't run with what I said. As a matter of fact, don't run with what no pastor say. Study the scriptures for yourself to know the truth. This is why I give you verse so you could write them down and go back to them later. And before you read them, you ask God to give you his understanding. And then you read it and then God will give you what he gave me. I'm quite sure of that. Now, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15 says, If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So if your name is not written in the book of life, you will end up in hell. And how do you get your name in the book of life? Be an obedient Christian. What did Jesus say? If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You be an obedient Christian till the day you die. Even before you die. Jesus knows what's going to happen. God knows what's going to happen. So if God already knows that you will be an obedient Christian until the day you die, your name will be written down in the book of life. Let me say that again out of the scriptures. If your name is not written in the book of life, you're going to hell. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Now, I must say this. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Hell is not designed for people. Hell was designed for Satan and his demonic angels. Let me read that to you. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then he said to those on his left, depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not designed for people. It was designed for Satan and his angels. But just because God gave us free will, the will to choose right or wrong, people choose wrong, die in that wrong, and end up in hell. Now, I must say this. You have the Bible said Christians will also end up in hell. These Christians are going to hear from Jesus himself, away from me, I never knew you, and you will end up in hell. These Christians are going to say, God, Jesus, we, we chase demons out of your name, we help people in your name. Jesus is going to tell them, away from me, I never knew you. These are the fake Christians. These are the wolf and sheep clothing Christians. These are the ones that's busting hell wide open. These are the Christians who, who brings the world into the church. These are the Christians who rebel against God, forget the laws of God, and live the way the world want them to live. And when they die and face judgment, they bust hell wide open. Let me say it again. Christian, my brothers and sisters, be careful of what you do. Make sure you stick with God all the way 100%. Obey him 100%. Because if you put God aside and pick up world views and die that way, judgment day, you will be entering hell. And we all know hell is not a pretty place. It's a place of eternal torment. Meaning for the rest of life or the rest of eternity. You will be burning forever. You will be in torment forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. A billion years will go by and you still be in torment. Hell does not have a probationary period where you go for six months and then you go to heaven. No. So make it your point that before you die, you are, on a, you are an obedient Christian in every way. So your name will get written down in the book of life. That's the only way your name can be written down in the book of life. You have to be an obedient Christian all the way. Like Jesus told his disciples when he told them to go out, help people. The disciples came back. Oh, Jesus, we chase demons out of your name. What did Jesus tell them? Be happy. Don't be happy. Excuse me. Jesus told them, don't be happy that you chase demons out of my name. But be happy that your name is written down. In heaven, be happy that your name is written in the book of life. The disciples did what? When Jesus sent them out, what did they do? They obeyed him. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. This is how you get your name in the book of life. You obey Jesus Christ. You obey the laws of God. God knows who belongs to him. He knows that if it's this person or that person, he knows that 
you trusting him in 100%. He knows that you're going to die trusting in him, obeying him. So guess what? Your name is written down in the book of life. And on that day of judgment, you're going to hear, welcome, my good and faithful servant. You're not going, you're not going to hear, away from me, I never knew you. So, let me say this again. Christians are going to go to hell. Non-Christians are going to go to hell. God, when he looks down from heaven, he only see two set of people. Christians and non-Christians. He don't see no Muslim. He don't see no Catholic. He don't see no Hindu. He just see Christians and non-Christians. Due to the, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, when God looked down from heaven, let me say this again. When Father God looked down from heaven, he only see two set of people. Christians and non-Christians. So let's get that straight. Non-Christians, I'm telling you this now. Repent, get baptized, give your life to God, obey his commandments, get your name written in the book of life so you can go to heaven. Now, there's a story that I want to read into your mind about this place called hell. About this place that it's a forever torment. And it's in Luke chapter 16. Starting at verse 19. It's titled, The Rich Man and Lazarus. And that's a fitting title, The Rich Man and Lazarus. What did Jesus say? It's easier for the camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. So all you rich pastors, be careful. Don't let these riches get to your brain where you it caused you to go to hell. So let's get into this word. <sighs> Heavenly Father, your humble servant come before you, asking you to asking you for your spirit. Take control of his mind and his mouth so he can bring forth your message with truth, clarity, and most of all understanding. And your holy servant also asks that you open the minds of the viewers to the scriptures so they can understand it clearly. In Jesus' name I ask of this. Amen. Glory be to God. Let's get into the message. Lazarus and the rich man. Taken from Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Let's read. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. You know I like to break it down verse by verse. But this verse doesn't need any breaking down. It's simple. There was a rich man. Didn't give his name. He was a rich man. He was dressed in purple. Purple means royalty. And fine linen. And he lived in luxury every day. That means he had the nicest house. Big, nice house. Back then, it wasn't any cars. That means he had chariots being pulled by horses. He had a nice, beautiful chariot. Nice, beautiful horses. And he had a lot of money. So he lived in luxury every day. Let's move on. Verse 20, at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked this sore. Lazarus, a poor man. In these days, we will call Lazarus a bum, a homeless bum. And Lazarus ended up at this rich man's gate. Lazarus was smart. He didn't go around begging everybody. He just, hey, I'm going to stay right here at this rich man gate. Maybe he'll help me. Now we have to look at this. This beggar man, homeless beggar man, laid at the rich man gate. Every day this rich man came out of his house, he see this beggar man at his gate. Let's move on. This is very interesting. Verse 22. Before I go to verse 22, let's just sum up how poor Lazarus was. He didn't have any home. He was homeless. He didn't have a job, so he couldn't eat. And the worst thing of all is his body was covered with sores and the dog licked his sores. Now, you know, that's not good. Sore, if your body is full of sores, you need special attention, you need medical attention. A dog licking your sores, that's infecting your sores with germs and bacteria. So Lazarus lived a rough life. Homeless, no money, 
full of sores, dog licking his sores, nobody cares for him. Lazarus lived a rough life. Rich man lived a luxurious life. Pay attention to that. Lazarus lived a rough life. Rich man lived a luxurious life. Let's move on. Verse 22. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, both these men died. Let's see what happened. In hell, verse 23, in hell, where he was torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Rich man died and went straight to hell. Straight to hell. Lazarus died and he went straight to heaven. How do I know that? The Bible said the angels carried him to the side of Abraham. We all know this is the Abraham that was married to Sarah. This is Abraham, the father of Isaac. This is Abraham who God chose to be the father of the Israelite people. Abraham. Abraham lived his life believing and believing God and being faithful to God and trusting God. So when he died, guess what? From him being so obedient, Abraham entered heaven. Now, rich man also died, buried in hell. He woke up in hell where he was tormented. He looked up. He didn't say look to the side or this way. He looked up and he saw Abraham. So we have to know up is heaven. Let's move on. He looked up and he saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Verse 24. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Rich man woke up in fire. Woke up. I'm in fire. He's in torment immediately. Look up. Seen the man that he could have helped, but he didn't. I told you this was going to get interesting. He looked up in heaven and he seen the man, the beggar, the same beggar man that was at his gate every day. Longing to eat the crumbs from his table. Because that's what it said. Lazarus was longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Longing to eat what fell. Longing to eat the crumbs. So this rich man who knew that this man needed help. He ignored this man every day. In and out of his house. He ignored this man. He went to go pick up the mail. He ignored the man. Now guess what? He's asking the same man that he ignored. To go dip his finger in water. Just the tip. And come put it on his tongue. Because he is in agony. In fire. Rich people. Beware of how you treat people, not only for the rich, also for poor. Be careful of how you treat people. Let's move on. Verse 25. But Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you receive good things while Lazarus received bad things. See that? He received good things in his lifetime. Because the Bible said he lived in luxury the whole life. Luxury. Just nice things. And in Lazarus times, he received bad things. But, you know the thing that shocks me? This rich man had so much money. He could have helped Lazarus. He could have gave Lazarus, he could have gave Lazarus a new life. He could have took Lazarus to the doctor, have him cleaned up, fixed up. He could have gave Lazarus a little small house, a nice little horse and a chariot so Lazarus could go around and do business and help himself. He could have gave Lazarus a help and start, but he chose not to. I put a post on Facebook today. It says, you have Elon Musk and you have Jeff Bezos. Not to mention all the other rich people, all the other millionaires and billionaires, just alone in America. These billionaires... And millionaires in America can end world hunger just by coming together. And guess what? If they do that, they will still be billionaires and millionaires. They will still be rich. They have the power to make the world a better place, but they choose not to. 
Guess what? If they die like that, you already know where they're ending up. Let's move on. Verse 25. But Abraham replied, Son, remember in your lifetime you received good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Lazarus is comforted in heaven. Heaven is the end goal. Heaven is where you want to be. I hear people say, oh, there's no heaven. Heaven is on earth. How can this be heaven? I'd rather you say this is hell. There's no way what's going on on this earth right now could be heaven. So, he's in agony. He's not comforted. Now, you know the worst part about this is? You have to have spiritual insight. This is why you ask God to give you spiritual insight into his word. Pay attention to this. Hell is already, you know, he's in, he, the rich man is in hell. He's already being tormented. He said that because I am in agony in this fire. He's already being tormented. So the Bible said he woke up in hell where he was in torment. So he's tormented, right? Now, he looks up and he sees Lazarus sitting by the side of Abraham. That's heaven. So to me, that's the worst torment of all. You look up and you see people that you could have helped. They're in paradise. They're in a good place. While well, you're in a bad place, that has to be the worst torment ever. I believe if I go to hell, I'm not even going to look up. Why? It doesn't make no sense to look up. That's more agony you're putting on yourself. You're already in agony and you look up. You see people having fun and partying. Because the Bible said heaven is a party. People having a party and you're down in hell burning. Like if, if I'm in hell, I'm not looking up. For what? That's I'm putting more pressure on myself. So, we have to think about this, my brothers and sisters, and people who are not Christians. You have to seriously think about you not going to hell. Now, let's move on. He was in agony, right? Okay, move on. Verse 26, Abraham is talking. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great chasm that has been fixed so that those who want to go from you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Let me read that again. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Meaning, God built a barrier between heaven and hell. People from hell cannot go to heaven, and people from heaven cannot go to hell. Just that simple. Let's move on. Verse 27. So basically, Abraham is telling the rich man, Lazarus can't help you, brother. So basically, you have to look, read between the lines again. Lazarus can't help you, my brother. Because you didn't help Lazarus when he was in his time of need. Now when you're in time of need, you want him to help you. No, he can't help you. God has put a barrier. Nobody can leave from here to go to there. So guess what? You're out of luck. Let's move on. Verse 27. The rich man answered. Then I beg you, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so they will not also come to this place of torment. He wants Abraham. To send Lazarus to warn, to go to his father's house to warn his father and his five brothers. Hey, please help people out in their time of need. You don't want to come to hell. You don't want to come to this place in torment. You don't want to come where I'm at. So he's now, he's concerned about his brothers. He's concerned about his family, his father and his five brothers. Verse 29, look what Abraham said. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. So when I read this scripture and it says they have Moses. So that means this, that Jesus is, Jesus is the one telling, telling the people this story. So that means if 
If Abraham said they have Moses, this story took place in the time of Moses. This is an Old Testament story. So that means hell was basically designed, was hell was here even in Old Testament days. Now that that that, that shows me one thing that back in Old Testament days, if you died in your sins or being wicked and evil, you automatically went to hell. If you died being a righteous and good person, you automatically went to heaven. But now, since Jesus' death on the cross, there's a judgment day. There wasn't a judgment day in the Old Testament. There's a judgment day now. Wow. It's beautiful. Let's move on. So they have Moses and the prophet. Let them listen to them. Verse 30. The rich man said, no, Father Abraham, he said. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. They will repent. If someone from the dead go to them, they will repent. Verse 31, look what Abraham said. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Wow, that goes to show you that his father and brothers and his five brothers are so rich. They don't want to hear what people got to say about heaven or hell. They don't want to hear what people got to say about living righteous. And if you pay attention, that's how rich people are today. They don't want to help the poor. They don't, want, they, they don't even want to hear about the poor. They don't, especially, they don't want to hear nothing about Christ or God. But as this shows, once they die, if they do not repent, once they die, you know where they're ending up. My brothers and sisters, take this message seriously. Hell is real. You have heard people say, I had a dream of hell. God took me to hell and brought me back and told me to write something about it. Hell is real. I read a story one time of these two Russian scientists. They decided, let's see what's under the earth. So they decided to dig. They dig and they dig and they dig, but they bump, they bump into molten lava. And the lava melted the digger. We all know what lava is. It's that stuff that comes out of volcanoes. That melts everything in its path. So the molten lava melted the digger. So they couldn't dig anymore. So they decided, oh well, we know it's molten lava in the middle, under the earth. Let's close up the hole. But one scientist said, wait, 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 wait. Before we close up the hole. Let's see what's down here. Let's see if anything is down there. So they dropped the microphone in a fireproof box because they know, you know, the molten lava destroyed the digger. So they dropped them a microphone with a recorder in a, in a fireproof box. They let it stay down there for a few minutes. They pulled it back up. The box was destroyed, but they pulled it up just in time. The microphone with the recorder wasn't destroyed. So they played the recorder. And what they heard was screaming. Human beings screaming on the top of their lungs, on the top of their voice, screaming. And if you put that, what you just read, why were they screaming? They were in torment. They were in agony. You cannot be in fire and just sit there. La da 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 dee 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 da. You can't sit in fire and 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 not be in agony or torment. So one scientist said, "We have just discovered there is a hell." That's all they heard was screaming. People in agony. They heard the voice of multitudes of people screaming. And this story lets you know that that's the truth. Because, like I said, when Jesus was telling this story, this took place in the Old Testament. So you got to understand, from the time people were dying in their sins and being evil and going to hell. You know how many people is in hell when those two scientists discovered hell? You know how many people there's in hell right now? And you know how many people who are going to hell after Judgment Day? Judgment Day is not a pretty day. Judgment Day is the day where all your wrongdoings and your rightdoings will be placed in front of you. And 
If your wrong doings are more than your right doings, you're busting hell wide open. I've already told you in the beginning of this message that Jesus is going to tell some Christians away from me. I never knew you. You're busting hell wide open. So hell is a real place, my brothers and sisters. For those of you who are not Christians, hell is a real place. Heaven is the opposite of hell. The Bible says that heaven is a paradise. Hell is torment. So my brothers and sisters, take my message seriously. For you who are not Christians, I suggest you seriously repent, ask God for your forgiveness, and get baptized. Because in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus himself spoke about the signs of the end. And all these things you're seeing now, these are the signs. Paul said the rebellion of the church will occur in the last days. Churches are rebelling now. Churches don't listen and obey God anymore. They do what they want to do. And this is what Satan has done. He has deceived the minds of the pastors. This is why pastors come under scrutiny about why you have so much money and you're not helping the poor. Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hill, Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar just admitted that he, he preached the wrong message on prosperity. He was ripping people off for their money. T.D. Jates, old uh, 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 Paula White, uh, what's, the other, what's the other big time preacher? Uh, Joel Osteen uh, and, and the other lady, what's, what's her face? Uh, I don't much remember because I really don't pay attention to it anymore because all they preach about is money. They really don't preach the truth about hell. They don't preach the truth about sin. They don't preach the truth about homosexuality, abortion. All these things that these governments are doing to go against God, these preachers are not preaching about it. I read in a, I'm going to say this and I'm done. I read in an article that Bush, the President Bush, he went round to the black churches, the black mega churches, and he paid them off so they won't say anything about the struggle of black people. And when I read that, I was like, I could believe that because you hear no big time megachurch pastor speaking on the black struggle that black people is having. When officers, white officers kill innocent black men, you hear no megachurch pastors speak on it. I never heard TGJ speak on nothing. Creflo Dollar, nothing. And it's, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's really a shame. But hey. What can we do? God has all power. Well, on that day of judgment, when you hear away from me, I never knew you. It's not nobody's fault but yours. That's in my message. I'm making it my best for me and my family not to go to hell. I can control my kids that are grown. I could just leave them and let them make their right decision. But if they end up in hell, it's not my fault. Because as a man of God, I told them, what to do and what not to do. Stay away from evil things and be good. Believe in God. And stay away from devilish people. I could just lead them I, and teach them. I can't make them do what I want them to do. I can't make my kids do what God wants them to do. So if they end up in hell, it was on their shoulders. That's the end of my message, my brothers and sisters. Please share this message with your loved ones because this place called hell is real and if I was you study your Bible about hell because all the informa information you need is there so with that being said all I'm asking you to do is subscribe to my channel spread this message across tell people to subscribe to my channel because all I love to do all I'm interested in doing is spreading the truth Spreading the truth about God and what's going on in society. I care less if you like. I'm not in, in this for the money. I know some pastors are, are, are flooding Facebook with their YouTube messages. Please like, please like. Because I found out if you get so much like, YouTube will pay you. I'm not there for that. Only thing I want you to do is subscribe. So when I upload a new message, you will get the notification. And you can sit down with your family. And pay attention, write down the Bible scriptures and read it for yourself and get the understanding that God gave me. So with that being said, 
May the peace and grace of God be with you in abundance. May the love of Christ be with you in abundance in Jesus' mighty name. Have a good day, everyone. Glory be to God. Glory be to God.